would just guide this service by your Holy Spirit, Father. Whatever you want to do, Father, just do it, Father. We ask, Lord, also, Father, that you would bless every individual that's here, Father. Lord, you know what they have need of. We ask, Lord, that you meet their needs, Father, according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Whether it be physical healing, Father, whether it be finances, Father, whether it be just peace in their life, Father, we know you as a God that provides. So we thank you, Lord, and we worship for you uh, this morning in that, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, come on, lift him up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the God of the promise. I know a name that will bring them down. See, I'm not ashamed, it's waking within my soul. And I'm not ashamed to declare it now. Come on, let's go. Light of the world, trample the dark. chains and Jesus destroyed them all up from the grave he is with us now the light of the world trample the darkness and nothing can stop it you are the God of the promise every word will be a promise
I search the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise Treasures of fade Are never enough Then you came along And you put me back together desire is now satisfied here in your love. Come on, give him praise in the house. Oh, there's nothing better than you. There's nothing better than you, Lord. There's nothing, nothing is better than you. Come on, testify. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I'm not afraid. Show you my weakness. My failures and flaws. Lord, you see them all. And you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain. God. 
of chaos, confusion, don't know what's going to happen. I may know a lot of people, but I know a man who can. Amen? And that's God the Father. Come on, tell him again. You're the only one who can. Thank you, Jesus. We want to welcome you this morning. You are in the Father's house. Hallelujah. And when you're in the Father's house, all kinds of things can happen that you did not expect. Amen? Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We bless your name, Father. Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength And my story isn't over, my story's just begun And failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does Yeah, failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does Ooh, I lay your burdens down Father's house, check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Arrival's not the end game. Journey's where you are. You never wanted perfect, you just wanted my heart. And the story isn't over, if the story isn't good. The failure's never final when the Father's in the room. The failure's never final when the Father's in the room. your shame at the door it ain't welcome anymore Ooh, you're in the father's house yeah. father's house yeah, yeah, yeah. listen prodigals come home the helpless find home Love is on the moon when the father's in the room. Prison doors swing wide, the dead come to life. Love is on the moon when the father's in the room. Hey! Miracles take place, the cynical fight fade. Love is breaking through when the father's in the room. Jericho walls are quaking, strongholds now are shaking. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Love is breaking through when the Father's in the room. Come on. Shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. Ooh, you're in the Father's house. Come on. Ooh, lay your burdens down. Ooh, here in the Father's house. Check your shame at the door, cause it ain't welcome anymore. You're in the Father's house. Come on, give it praise. You know, 
there's this wrestler that they call The Rock. <laughs> and his motto is, can you smell what The Rock is cooking? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? You know who I'm talking about? Well, there's only one rock, and his name is Jesus Christ. And when you're in this house, hallelujah, you never know what he's cooking. Amen? You never know what he's got for you. Do you have expectancy this morning? Come on, I said, do you have expectancy this morning? God has a word for you. If you need a breakthrough this morning, he's here. Hallelujah. Whatever it is you have need of this morning, he's here to meet that need. Thank you, Lord. Because he is Jehovah Jireh. He is our provider. Thank you, Lord. He's your all-sufficiency. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Holy is your name, God. We worship you. We adore you. Let's just take a minute and just spend some time in his presence. Come on, just lift your hands. Come on, all over the house. Before you ask him for anything, why don't you thank him for what he's done and who he is. The Bible says to give thanks with a grateful heart. I will give thanks to thee, O God. I will make known your praises, your great deeds among the men, among the multitudes. Such a good God. Oh, hallelujah. We affirm your presence, God. Oh, there's nothing you can do. Lay every burden down. That weight you've been carrying, just roll it off on him today. The situation you can't do anything about, hallelujah, you've been worrying about, you've been concerned about. He's got you. I said he's got you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. Hallelujah. about you, but he's never failed me yet, and he won't. Hallelujah.
Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of angels stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever.
same yesterday, today, and forever. His name is the one with all authority. It's his name that makes demons tremble. It's his name that breaks bondage. It's his name that saves and seeks the lost. His name, his authority, has not been watered down. Don't second guess your position in Christ. Don't second guess your authority in his, in his name, in Jesus Christ. If you are battling something, you declare and you shout out his name because at the mention of his name, demons tremble. At the mention of his name, bondage is broken. People are set free. Miracles take place. Remember that. We're in a heavy time, folks. You could be struggling financially. You could be struggling physically, emotionally, mentally. But the one thing that you need to remember to continuously build up is your spirit and your walk with Christ because he is our savior. In our weakness, his strength is made perfect. And you need to remember that don't despise the struggles. Use them as opportunities to get closer to the Father and watch Him make strength within you and make you perfect in that weakness. That, my friends, is the difference between what we have in a position with Christ and we're different from the world. We have a hope. When things go wrong, we still know everything's going to be just fine because he is our savior. He is our redeemer. He has not left us nor forsaken us. Things may be dark, but he is the light and you continue to focus on the light and don't look this way. Don't look that way. Don't focus on the storm what's burning over there you focus on him because he is a way he is a truth he is a life he has not I, I just keep hearing in my spirit like his his authority has not watered down his name is not watered down and we need to remember that and declare that Jesus is greater Jesus is greater Jesus is greater. I don't know what's going on. Jesus is greater. I don't know how I'm going to pay my bills. Jesus is greater. I'm not feeling well within my spirit. Jesus is greater. I have these heavy, heavy thoughts of suicide. Jesus is greater. I don't know how I'm going to do this alone. Jesus is greater no matter what. So we're going to give him glory today, this morning. We're going to continue on, and we're ready. We're ready to receive what God has in store today. Let's give the praise and worship team a round of applause, guys. I have a few announcements for you. First one is if you're a first time visitor, raise your hands. We have something for you. Our usher team will be giving you something. Anybody new here? All right. Well, it's good to see you all's faces. We also have another wonderful event taking place for our Women of Worth. We have a Christmas gathering that is going to be December 12th. That's on a Saturday at 10 a.m. So I encourage you ladies, get your friends, get your moms, get your uh, sisters, and, and enjoy a time of fellowship with the ladies here. It's always such a pleasure every time we get together. 
and of course we still have our restrictions but we are mindful we are wise and we will follow god guidelines as they are but i want to encourage you to take the opportunity if you've never gone to this event before please do come it is so much fun and now i'm going to pass it on over to pastor robbie and we're going to continue on with our worship let's give him a round of applause to rest in his presence is amazing, isn't it? The peace, the tranquility, just to know that, that he's forever in control. And I just lost my scripture. Lord have mercy. I want to read something to you. I know a lot of you have heard this scripture. <clears throat> it's found in Deuteronomy, or Malachi, sorry, chapter chapter 3 verse 10 it says bring me all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house and prove me now herewith the only place in God's word where he says test me prove me saith the Lord of hosts if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it now I've heard a lot of ministers say and we know the word says and whatever measure you give it shall be given back to you. But right here, it tells you and me that he'll put my, his blessing on my tithe. And he'll pour out a blessing on me that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I don't know about you, but that's an awesome promise. When God tells me to give the tithe to him and he tells me he's going to doubly bless me if I give an overly bless me that's just on the tithe church that's not on over and above giving offering that you may give out and I was telling Miss Patty this morning that you know in in all of the years that I have served the Lord I have never gone without I haven't I haven't had to I haven't had to to scrounge to make ends meet I haven't had to but you know why because we made it a purpose to tithe. When I was very young, I was taught to tithe, to give. And the Lord would take care of me. And he has over and above. And you got to understand something. It's not just that, that he's going to give you, give you more money or, or maybe bring increase into your home financially, but it's also in everything that you own now. Because it says in the next verse, it says, I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. And so he says it's not going to bud too soon, and it's not going to come too late. But he says, I'm going to rebuke the devourer. Listen, you can have everything in the world. You can have money. You can have cars. You can have homes. But unless that devourer is rebuked, unless there is a covering over that, the enemy can devour that. And at, the, at a very young age, and I, I had a good job. I was making good money. I thought to myself, what's happening? What's happening? It was in a time in my life when, when I thought, well, you know, God understands. I'm just not going to, you know, there's a season there. Man, God got on my case because I saw everything just fall through my fingers. No matter how much money I had, Pastor Catherine, it just fell right through my fingers. The tires on the car kept blowing out. Car kept breaking down. Refrigerator kept breaking down. Things kept happening. You see, if you want that hedge of protection over you and your family, you have got to get the principle of tithing down. Because it's not just that I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. What you're doing is you are putting a covering over everything that you own. Listen, you are putting a hedge of protection over your children, over their children, over your finances, over your home, over everything you own. So the enemy cannot come in and take it from you. And so if, if we're willing to let go of that 10% that he asked for, it says right here, he'll open up the windows of heaven. Amen? And so this morning, if you need an offering envelope, just lift your hand. All around the house. 
You know, am I too loud out there? Okay. Gotta be careful. Ernest always tells me I, I'm too loud when I talk sometimes. So he's always picking on me. I don't know what. He's... Anybody else offering envelope? Everybody got what they need? Now remember that you're planting seed. You're planting seed. So if you're believing God for something in your life, you're believing for a new car, you're believing for a new home, you're believing for something that you don't have yet, of course, put faith to that seed. Amen? And claim that house. Claim that car. I don't want to embarrass him, but Ernest, Ernest and Elena over here, they got a new car this week. God bless them with a new car. Come on, can you praise the Lord? We need to rejoice with those when they're blessed. And uh, praise God, he's, he's moving. Uh, you know, and let me say this. I can, I can testify to this because when Jennifer and I first came to this church, there was a lot of things we were believing God for because we stepped out in faith. And God instantly provided in that situation. And, and let me say this. There's a time of growth. There's a time of patience. There's a time of, of learning to depend upon him more so in times like that. But I've learned that through those times that God has brought me to a higher place of living. And I can truly say this. In the last, is it four years almost, that we've been here, it is amazing what God has done in and through our lives financially. Not just in our lives, but in our children's lives. It's been amazing. And so when you step into this house, you step into a house of faith. You step into a house of provision. Because that's what we believe and that's what we stand upon. So let that be an encouragement to you. But this morning, I want you to bring your offering. We're going to pray before you do. And as you come, bring your offering. Bring it cheerfully, amen, happily, ready to give to God. God, we thank you this morning, Lord, that you've given us seed to sow, that you've blessed us, Lord, to be able to sow into your kingdom. And, Father, this is about souls. This is about kingdom business, Father. This is about bringing people into the kingdom of God. So, Father, as we give today, we thank you, Father, that you will honor your word, Father, that you will open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon us that we shall not be able to contain. We thank you. We praise you for your covenant. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Now bring your offering. Hallelujah. Can you give God praise? Just want to real, real quickly, I forgot to do this, but uh, if we could put the slide up there that shows the different ways to give, I just want to go over those real quickly. If you are uh, live, watching us via live stream, you can text to give. Even if you're in-house, you can text to give 833-459-0231, or you can give online, cornerstonechurchcc.org slash give, or you can drop it in the mail, P.O. Box 18683, Corpus Christi, Texas 78480. Also, there's also two boxes just as you go out over there that you can drop your offering in. Amen? So uh, how many of you just say, repeat after me, say, I, I can't get away with not giving. Uh-oh. There's too many opportunities. Amen? Well, are you ready for the word? Oh, come on. Pastor Gene's ready. Are you ready for the word? Oh, come on. Are you really ready for the word? Y'all welcome Pastor Arnold as he comes to minister to you. Come on, give him a good, good praise. Come on, he's worthy. Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Blessed, marvelous. All right. All right, all right, all right. Well, before we start off, we got a, um, 
got a message from, from one of our leaders here that wanted to lift up somebody in prayer, and then uh, we're going to lift them up in prayer, and then we'll lift up the rest of the service in prayer, and then we'll begin. Amen? Sound good? Yeah. All right. All right, let's bow your heads and join with me in prayer. We're going to pray for one of the local ministries as well as all the local churches here. Um, Father, we just come before you, God, and we just thank you, Father, that we have the opportunity to be in your house as a family, God. And we know that this family, your family, the family of God is not contingent or contained just in one building or one church or one ministry, but we are the body of Christ. And so, therefore, we lift up the rest of the body, all the body that, that is not here in this building, but in, throughout the cities and throughout the world, Father. We lift up a church, a local ministry that is a friend of this ministry, that is, that is somebody that we stand behind, God. And we just pray, Father, that you would do what you need to do in that situation, Father. We don't know any of the situation. We just ask we were just asked to lift them up in prayer. So right now we lift up the pastor, we lift up their family, we lift up their sons, those that are in ministry, their daughter-in-law, everybody that, that is in the leadership, Father God, we pray for them right now. We pray for supernatural healing, whether it be a physical sickness or just something that is going on, Father, we pray protection over them, in Jesus' name. We pray that the leadership would get behind them and do whatever needs to be done in order to hold the arms of the pastor up just like they did with with Moses, Father. We thank you, God, that your calling and that your, 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 your blessings are, are not to be taken back there without repentance. And we thank you, Father God, that every person, every person who is called into ministry in this city, God, will fulfill the call that you have placed upon them. They will go out and they will stand on the word of God unashamedly, not, not looking back, not putting their hands to the plow and looking back and going back to where they came from, but they would march forward in you. Father, we thank you for this ministry, Cornerstone Church. We thank you for the leadership that is here. We thank you that they hear from the Spirit of God, and they are led, and they follow the leading of the Spirit of God. We thank you for our pastors. We thank you that for the complete restoration of their bodies. We thank you for Krista, for the complete restoration of her body. We thank you that she is in recovering right now from a, a, a sinus um, a situation, Father God, that you would just completely heal from this moment on, and she would never have to deal with any of that again. Father, we lift up all those that are sick in this place right now, all those that are sick, that are listening and looking online, God, that call this place home. Maybe they're just tuning in for the first time, but we pray healing. We confess healing over your bodies right now in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I ask that the meditation, the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable and pleasing in your side, God, that it would just come out from your spirit, not mine, not my will, not my emotions, but your will be done today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Well, I feel like I haven't been here in a while, so I haven't, but thank God we are back and we miss everybody here, and it's just an honor and a privilege to be able to minister to you this morning. Uh, I don't really know what I'm going to minister on, so we are going to let the Holy Spirit do his thing. I seriously, truly do not know. I have a chapter of the Bible that we are going to read, and I think I know where we're going to go, but it's just been a rough, rough, rough couple of weeks. It really has. And I, like my wife said, you know, regardless of what's going on, Jesus is greater. Amen. Jesus is greater. And he is the Lord, and his power has not watered down. And I was asking the Lord, I've been traveling, I've been having to go to drive to Kansas City, and how many you know that was a long drive, so I get a lot of alone time, and I said, God, you know, I was thinking about everything that was going on, and, and uh, seeing a whole bunch of things that have been happening, not just in the world, but the body of Christ. And I was reminded about how he said that this year, people, or how he told me uh, that you were going to see, that the body of Christ was going to see who they really are. And that we would see clearly and see ourselves more clearly. Never would I have imagined that we would see posers and people who think that they are saved in the body of Christ. But it's actually, we've actually seen them be revealed within this last couple of, of weeks. And even months that have made my jaw drop and have actually made me cry. I have actually shed tears as I read what's going on in the world. I'm not talking about the world, the world world, but I'm talking about the body of Christ. I've seen pastors fall. I've seen people who held worldwide ministries who have been known worldwide fall. 
I've seen people post things that have made me like, have made me cry as I'm driving, as I think about it. And it just hurts. It really does. And I said, man, I've been watching them forever. (laughs) I grew up watching them forever. And to see things that they post on social media and stuff like that, It's just blown my mind. Really has blown my mind. And I know believers who post stuff on social media that blow my mind. And I'm not telling you what you can and cannot post, but why can't we use that to glorify the King? Why can't we use social media to bring glory to God instead of trying to convince somebody where they're wrong? Why can't we use these things to glorify, which we were made to do, glorify His kingdom? And I, I was sharing with somebody, and I said, man, you know, so-and-so fell. And they're like, I know, my heart broke. And I was like, man, this is crazy. You're just overnight. Well, the sin didn't happen overnight, but overnight, you're over on top and just boom. And, and then you see different people post things just overnight. You know, I'm not saying that I don't like the person, I pray for them, but it's just hard to take in. And he said, I told you that you were going to see real clear this year. I said, God, I never would have imagined that it would be in a negative way. And he said, but I told you, you were going to see that the body of Christ was going to see who they were and who was not truly them. And I was like, wow. I said, okay, God, I I got you. I said, what what are we going to focus on? I haven't even asked you what this year is going to bring. I haven't even asked you because I've actually been caught up in feeling so bad for the people that, that I'm looking at and so bad for the people that I'm seeing in the posts and everything. It's hurt my heart. I haven't even asked you, what are we going to do this year? I just completely forgot because how many of y'all have been kind of caught up? You know, don't, don't be ashamed. You know, you don't have to raise your hands, but a lot of people have been caught up on what's happening right now, what's going on behind the scenes, and, and we feel this momentous shift about to happen. And then when it's about to happen, it seems like it just stops and something else just comes and takes away from it. And we're, we're, we're like, man, but, but like my wife said, Jesus' power has not watered down. It doesn't matter. What I was, I was in, I'm in a group chat and they said, man, you know, uh, feeling this kind of way about this or that and the election and this and that. And, you know, right, right out of my, my spirit, I said, you know, it's amazing because the devil... God has used the devil before. I'm not saying anybody's the devil, but to be so confused or to be so worried about something that you don't know, like, think about this. This is not political. This is biblical. That the devil fell into God's plan when he crucified the king of glory. Thought he had won. But he said, had I not known, had I known this, I would have never crucified the king of glory. That regardless of what goes on in your life, that part of Scripture should give you more than enough hope to stand on, more than enough hope to to believe in, because God will even use the devil to bring about his will. That is amazing to me that he even used Satan, that, that what Satan did was used and turned around for God's kingdom. That is amazing. Amazing to me. And so let's go to Ephesians 1. This is what he was telling me. I always promised my Lord and Savior that when you call me to be a preacher, I will never give my opinion. I don't think it's worth listening to. I will never give a political view. I will never give, I won't even let a holiday sway the message. Um, One of my friends said, man, I've never seen anybody give a Father's Day message about a woman being pregnant on Father's Day. I said, I'm just not going to be swayed on holidays. You know, I'm not going to be swayed. Whatever he says for me to say, I'm going to say it. And that's what he said to say. It was Father's Day. You talked about a woman being pregnant. And I was like, yep, that's just just me. God is going to lead me, guide me, and direct me. I said, Lord, what are we going to walk into this year? In Ephesians chapter 1, 
And I'm not saying this is for this house. I'm not the lead pastor of this house, so I'm not going to say that this is where our house is going to go. I'm just simply sharing with you what he told me. Amen? And I believe that it has a lot to do with the body of Christ. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. To the saints who are in Ephesus and faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Verse 3. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. If you do not have that underlined in your Bible or highlighted, I suggest you do that. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, having predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. That word predestined gets a lot of, a lot of people tripped up in predestination. That word literally means predetermined. Not predestined as in you're going to heaven and you're not predetermined. It's like when somebody has a baby and they predetermine that they're going to grow up and be good and respectful, but then sometimes they're not. <laughs> they just have that thought, like, I'm going to raise my kid to be good, respectful, they're going to obey, and then they get wild and you're just like, I don't know whose kid that is. <laughs> but that's what it means. He's predetermined us to be adoption, having predestined or predetermined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure, the good pleasure, the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace by which he made us accepted in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace, which he made to abound toward us in all wisdom and prudence or understanding. Verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself. Let me stop right there and let's, let's, let's break down a little bit. Verse 3, blessed is the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. Every spiritual blessing. Well, if you break down the word blessing, what does that mean? Empowered to prosper. So if you break it down, he's Bless you with everything that will empower you to prosper in heavenly places in Christ. First John says that we are, the way Christ is, we are in this place. That we are seated with him in the way that he is, we are like him here in this place. He's talking about heaven. He's blessed you with every spiritual blessing, everything that has empowered you to prosper, everything that you will need to empower to prosper in this place in heaven, but for this place. Every spiritual blessing, which is every spiritual gift. Wouldn't you say that the gifts of the Spirit are given to empower you to prosper? Okay, so we can say that he's talking about also the gifts of the Spirit. He has given you every gift of the Spirit to empower you to prosper in the heavenly places so that you can prosper in this place now. And notice how he says that it is his good pleasure, verse 5, having predetermined to adoption, uh, us to adoption as the, as the sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure, the good pleasure, is that what the King James Version says? Right? The good pleasure. I believe they say the same thing. The good pleasure. And if you go to verse 9, having made known to us the mystery of his will according to what? His good pleasure. So how many of you would agree that it is his good pleasure to bless you with every spiritual gift, with everything that you need to empower to prosper, with everything that you need on this place, not in heaven, but in this place, to empower you to prosper. And I'm not talking about financial gain. I'm talking about to have victory in this world today. Every spiritual gift. And why? Because Nine, having made known to us the mystery of his will. The mystery. Well, what is his ultimate will? His ultimate will before the foundations of the earth. He knew that he was going to have to send his son Jesus to be slain. Remember how I said that the, if they had the devils known, they would have never crucified the king of glory. 
which is his will. That's his ultimate will. But what is his will for you? We know the ultimate grand scheme of things that he sent Jesus to die so that we can be made right and reconciled with him once and for all. Like it says right here, without blame in him in love, holy and without blame. But it's his good pleasure to make known the mystery of his will. I said, God, why would Paul say good pleasure several times and why would he say every spiritual bliss? It sounds like Luke 12, 32, that my mind automatically went to that. Luke 12, 32. Turn right real quick. Luke 12, 32. Do not fear, little flock. For it is your father's, what? Good pleasure to what? To give you the kingdom. So what is his will? What does he delight in? What is his purpose for the body of Christ? To give you every spiritual blessing and to... He takes pleasure in giving you that. But not only the blessings, but what? Do not fear, little child, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. The kingdom. The whole kingdom of God. The whole kingdom of God. It is His good pleasure to give you everything that he has to empower you to prosper, not in heaven, but here on this earth so that you can have victory, so that everything around you will not affect what is in you. It is his good pleasure. Good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Turn back to Ephesians chapter 1. It is his good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That was verse 9. That in the dispensation of the fullness of time, there's that word fullness again. He says it quite often. That he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, in heaven, and which are on earth in him. In him we have also obtained an inheritance, being predestined or predetermined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will. Who works all things according to the counsel of his will. What is his will? To give you the kingdom. So everything that we have here and everything that is happening, it is his, he is working it according to his will to give you the kingdom, to bless you with every spiritual blessing that he has in his self, the spirit, his kingdom, good pleasure. Verse 18, go to verse 18. Ephesians 1, 18. That the eyes of your understanding or your heart being enlightened. That the eyes, that the eyes, that the eyes, that the eyes. Oh, now I know why I'm saying this. That the eyes, that the eyes, that the eyes. What was 2020 that we were all going to see clearer this year? We were all going to see God move in a different way this year. That we were going to see him. That the eyes, that the eyes, that the eyes of your heart be enlightened. How many of y'all have been enlightened this year? Whether it be seeing people for what they said they were and what they're not claiming to be. Or they're claiming to be and not really who they said they were. And you've actually seen that you are actually a lot stronger than what you thought you were because you've gone through so much more than you ever have today and you know that I have made it no matter what that the eyes of your heart be enlightened that the eyes of your spirit will see according to his calling 
which is the hope according to his calling, or the hope of his calling, that the eyes of your understanding. God, what are we going to look forward to this year? He said, you know, keep reading. I said, okay. That the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, or the eyes of your heart be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the what? Saints, which is who? The, us, which is the church. And what is exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in heavenly places. Verse 21, you should highlight this. Verse, what does it say? Far above. What? All. Far above all principalities, powers, and might, and dominions. Far above all sickness. Far above all diseases. Far above all, brother, big name falling. Far above all, they're not who I thought they were. Far above all, I'm the strongest I thought I was. I'm not as strong. I'm even stronger. Far above all, anything that could come against you, he is far above all. All. Mm. Might and dominion and every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in which is the one to come. Amen. Verse 22. And he put what? All. Come on, y'all got to be more enthusiastic about that. Okay, if, if you're not enthusiastic, then you're going to have some of this come over you. Because you don't believe that he's put all of the things under. If you don't believe that he's put everything under his feet, then something is going to be over you. Woo. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things. He switches, though, right here in this last part. Now he's not talking about the world, but he says, and gave him to be head over all things to who? Church. The church. Amen. The church. Amen. Who are the church? You, the saints of God, the church. To the church. The NLT version says that he has put all things under his feet and gave him to be head over all things to or for the benefit of the church. When you read the King James Version, it says to the church. But you got to fully understand that he is the head of the church and he has placed everything under his feet for the benefit of his church. And you're walking around defeated. We're walking around people falling. We're walking around people. You know what the problem is with today is so many people have political views. Ain't no, but God never said have a political view. He said have a biblical view. That's the problem. When your political view is so embedded in you that you forget about the biblical view. Or that your race or ethnicity comes before you actually being more like him? That's the problem. I'm not being political, I'm being biblical. There's a big difference. I will never be political. I will be biblical. To benefit the church. Mm. Verse 23, which is his body. What? What? The fullness of him who fills all in all. Which is his body, which is the fullness of it. Right now, I am seeing a body that is not full of him. Right now, in this day and age, I see a church that is only half half of him. 
I see a church that is divided, that has let the enemy come and divide the firm believers and has even turned some of those who have, who have placed their foundation on a solid rock and turned them into a, a political machine and has turned them into this is my belief and you need to believe this or you need to believe that and if you don't, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to attack you on Facebook, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, I'll even cuss at you because I'm getting upset When my Bible says that he is the head of the church all in all and fills the church all in all, I said, God, what are you going to do this year? He said, I'm weeding out all the people that have not let me be the head because I'm going to fill my church to the full this year. And I am going to be the head of the church. And that is why you're seeing all these different people fall. And that is why you're seeing all these different people go and, and show who they really are because they have the knowledge of God. But they don't have the intimacy with me. And he said, it's time this year I'm going to be the head of my church again. And I'm going to fill it. All in all. And everything that I've said before that hasn't come to pass is going to come to pass. It is going to come to pass. But only for those who will bend down to my leadership. Only for those who will, who will not place their own agendas, their political views, their way of thought process. Only all those who will bow and allow their ways to be under my feet. And I'm going to fill them. I'm going to fill them. Go to Colossians. The book of Ephesians and Colossians, they're so intertwined together. It's amazing. Some scholars believe that actually that the book of Ephesians, it says Paul the Apostle, Jesus Christ, to the saints of Ephesians, that that wasn't originally there. That they added that later on, that this book was supposed to be meant to the whole church, but because it landed in the Ephesians, they just they implemented that. And said, but it was supposed to actually be read by the church of Ephesus and then passed down, read to another church, and then read to another church, and then read to another church. And Colossians goes right hand in hand with it. And it wasn't meant to just be a letter to the Ephesians, but to the whole church and body, which is why he talks about the body as a whole, not to the church of Ephesus. He only mentions Ephesus in that one scripture. And then he says, go pass this on to the church at Laodicea. And Colossians is right intertwined with it. Colossians picks up right where Ephesians leaves off. So Colossians chapter 1, it is no wonder that he actually talks about the same thing. Verse 15, he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created that are in heaven and that are on earth earth in heaven on earth i've blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heaven why so that you can use it on earth in earth visible and invisible over every principality over every every darkness over everything which is remember when and, and uh, ephesians where he said in this age and the age to come it sounds similar verse 16 invisible and visible whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers all things were created through him, all things were created through him and for him. Amen. For him. All things were created through him and for him. Amen. So you mean to tell me that all this is supposed to be for him? Yes. But man got in here and twisted it. And turn everything upside down. But he said, if you're in my church, I am in you. And I will work it for who? The benefit of the church. And I will do it. Why? Because it was meant for me in the first place. And if you're in me, you get it too. Y'all yeah, didn't catch that. And if you're in me, you get it too. Things were created through him and for him. And he is before all things. 
And in him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, who? The church. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him all the, what? Fullness. It is my Father's good pleasure to give you all the kingdom, which is the fullness of who he is. All the fullness should dwell. Dwell in who? In Christ. And by him to reconcile all things by himself, or to himself by him, whether things on earth or things in heaven, who have made peace through the blood of his cross. So what are you saying? I'm simply saying that we are not living up to what he intended us to be. And that the church right now is in shambles because they're so divided. But he says, I am going to get my church where they're supposed to be, what I intended it to be, and I'm going to fill it, and I'm going to be the head again. I don't know about y'all, but I've seen a lot of churches that don't have Jesus Christ as their head. They have their pastor, they have their board, they have people that that got money. That's the head. They make the decisions. They don't want to admit it, but they make the decisions because we we want to make this person happy. We want to do this. We want to do that, which is not Jesus the head. He said, I am going to be the head, and it is all going to be through me again. And I'm going to fill my church with the fullness of who I am. So that why? So that you can walk in every spiritual blessing. So that you can walk in every spiritual gift to bring glory to His name. We got people in here that don't pray in tongues. We got people in here that have never prayed for somebody and then be healed. We've got people in here in this body that don't operate in the supernatural. Why? Because we're not allowing his fullness to be in us. He says, I've already given it to you. I was having a conversation with somebody last night, and I said, you know, you speak in tongues. And they said, well, we have, but we haven't. And I was like, okay. And I was really there, and I said, but you know what? That the fact that you asked for it, the Bible already says that it is yours. Just the fact, he says, you ask and I'll give it to you. Well, I haven't seen the evidence of it yet. It doesn't matter if you've seen the evidence of it yet. Because he's already given it to you. And we have this misconception that, that, well, the Bible says I'm the fullness of God because I'm in Jesus Christ. I don't feel like the fullness of God. It doesn't matter because he says he is the fullness of him. He will work out in you and through you. But we let our minds and we let the things that are around us, we let everything uh, contradict what God has already said. And I told him, you know what, it's, it's this, it's this, it's this. you got to get out of here. This is not something that can be comprehended by this at all. At all. And we, 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 we pray and we let our minds in and everything. Well, well, you know what, I prayed for somebody and they died. Well, okay, bless God, they're in heaven. That doesn't mean that you change this. That doesn't mean that just because that one person died, that by his stripes we are healed is void. That doesn't mean that. And I struggled with that for a long time. I did. I did. I didn't want to pray for somebody because the person I was praying for and believing for died. It was my best friend. It was his daughter. Didn't want to pray for nobody after that. I said, God, I was standing and I was believing for you to heal her. And he said, you're still thinking with this. My realm cannot be seen with this. The gifts in the Spirit 
and everything that he's given the church to prosper cannot be obtained by this. You cannot operate in those things by this. You cannot accept what he's given you by this. You cannot speak in other tongues by this. You have to let go of all of this. Because you're going to sound stupid. You're going to sound dumb. You're going to sound ridiculous. And it's going to, when you think, when you hear it with this, you're going to shut up because you don't want to sound like that no more. Oh, no, I hear myself. Quit listening to yourself with this. I'm walking and I'm, and, I, and I'm trying to walk this thing out in the fullness of who he's called me to be, but I'm not seeing anything because you're looking with this. He says, I wanna, I've already given it to you, now I want you to operate in it this year. And I called Chris, I had a conversation and I said, you know what, I really do believe that this year we're going to see some mighty things happen. Like, I truly believe it. Like, I think, and she said, oh, you know what, we've had confirmations of this and this and that, that there was going to have churches and this. And I said, yeah, I believe that, but I believe that it's going to happen in here, but it is not going to stay in here. Because God says for us to go out into all the world, it doesn't make a bit of difference if we keep everything that he is doing inside the building because the body of Christ is not a building and he doesn't want to be the head of a building he wants to be the head of a body that moves breathes and inhales who he is so that he can take everything out into a hurting and dying world but my gosh I said it's not going to be in the church it's not going to be in the church it's going to be out in the world. Because we got people in the church fighting in the church. <laughs> and I believe it's going to start in the church because we need to have some type of, of training and order and everything like that. That's why he's, he's pastors, prophets, evangelists for the edifying and the building of the church, but not to stay in the church, to go out into the world. And we have a church who is scared and fearful because of what the world is saying, that we'd rather stay in the building because we're scared of what's out there. We're saying, no, no, you come to us. No, 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 no. We got something going on in the church, but you need to come to us to see it. And Jesus is saying, no, I said for you to go to them to see it. I didn't say come and draw the people to the church. I said come and draw them to me. Man, didn't know we were going this way. We have a hurting and dying world. And I know it's supposed to get like this. And I know it's supposed to get darker and darker. And I know that. Everybody knows that. But in order for him to be who he is, he requires his church to get brighter and brighter. He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Let's just go to 1 Corinthians so that we can see what that all entails. Go to 12, verse 7. We'll just go ahead and read it all. 12, verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I do not want you to be ignorant. I don't want you to be dumb. I don't want you to not know about them. I don't want you to think that it's for somebody else and not for you. I don't want you to, to not operate in them. I don't want you to do I need you to operate. And Paul's telling the, Corinth, the church at Corinth this. I don't want you to be ignorant. You know that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God calls Jesus a curse, and no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by who? The Holy Spirit. 
There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. We're over here fighting about, oh, he got this one, I want that one. How come I don't got that one? He's saying there's differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. That sounds just like what we read, right? That he is the head of the church all in all. Man, that was coincidental, I guess. I don't know about the Spirit. Verse 7, but the manifestation of the Spirit is given to who? Every Every man. To each one for the profit of what? All. Man, the Lord loves that word, all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healings by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discernment of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretations of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works, what? All things. All these things distributing to each one individually as he wills. Mm. I think a lot of church members have taken this scripture, the distributing to each one individually as he wills. I think we've taken that and made it doctrine of itself. That you can only have one spiritual gift. That you can only operate in one thing and not operate in all things. And I believe that this is the year that the Lord is going to pour out the fullness of who he is so that we can operate in all things. Not just one thing, not just here or there. You know, for the longest time, I thought my gift was just preaching. That was it. I said, well, Lord, I never seen nobody healed. I never seen, you know, somebody come out of a wheelchair. So I guess you just blessed me with with the gift of gab, the tongue or something like that. You know, you just gave me me a a quick tongue and that's it. Okay, I'm going to accept it. That's it, because I love to argue growing up. So I said, you turn that around, and that's my gift. That's it. And I accepted that, that all I was going to be good for was my mouth and to preach his gospel. I accepted that, because I took this, and people saying, oh, you 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 can't operate in multiple gifts. You can't operate, you know, not everyone has all the gifts. Not everyone, well, Jesus did. He did. And if we're in him, correct me if I'm wrong, he says that we are seated in heavenly places with him so that as he is, we can be where? Here on this earth. Why are we limiting the fullness of God? Why are we limiting the fullness of God? I did it for years. Thinking, God, you only blessed me to preach. That's it. And I'm going to be content, and I'm going to, I'm going to work at that, and I'm going, to, I'm going to correct that and refine that and fine-tune that, and it's going to be great. And I'm going to sound so sophisticated, and it's going to be good, and none of that never happened. Because I stopped thinking that way. I used to watch my, my, my sermons and say, where can I, where can I fix, or, or what can I do, and what can I do to refine this and refine that, and how can I change all these things? thinking that that was the only thing that he gifted me with. But he says, I will give you the fullness of who I am so that you can operate. Paul says later on to desire the best gifts, which is what? The best gift for that time. That whatever is needed at that time, you ask him to reveal to you and he will operate through you, in you, and through you at that time. Which means you are not confined to one gift only, that you can operate in all these gifts. But we have a church that doesn't know the fullness of who he is, so we barely operate just in the gift of tongues. Getting heavy in here. But he says this year, I want to I wanna, I wanna become the head of the church again. I, I want, because everything was made through me and for me. And if you're in me, then I want it to be for you too. I don't know about y'all, but 
I don't see how a church who doesn't operate in this can last. I don't see it. I don't see a believer who doesn't operate in every spiritual blessing that he has already blessed you with can last, especially in the times that we're in right now. You need the gifts of the Spirit. You need all that He's given you. You need to operate in these things to make it through the world today. I've said this time and time again. If you have never felt the tangible presence of God invade your space, then you are missing You are missing. That is like the very beginning of where all this stuff starts. If you have never felt the tangible presence. I was talking to somebody one time, and they were praying, and they said, I could feel somebody right next to me. They had never felt that before. I said, it's awesome, right? They were like, kind of scared me a little bit. (laughs) But it was awesome. Imagine walking in that all the time. Imagine that happening all the time and everywhere you go. And you say, oh, we don't go off feelings. No, we don't go off feelings. We don't. But imagine that you get so comfortable in that, you don't feel it anymore, but all those that are around you feel it. And you don't even feel it no more. I've been up here the last maybe four or five times. I ain't feeling nothing like, I've ne- like I used to feel before. And I'm like, man, I hope this is making sense. Man, I hope I'm going to pray for these people and stand in faith. And then their knees buckle and everything. And I'm like, that I didn't feel nothing at all. And then I've had people say, hey, when you were praying around them, you could feel the presence of God, the tangible presence, which is my prayer. Lord, let us feel your tangible presence. Holy Spirit, let us feel it tangible. Why? Because that is going to change people. When they know that these are not just words that we're saying, when they know that this is not just a book, but you operate. I didn't come to you in enticing words, Paul said, but I came to you in the demonstration of power in the Spirit. How are we going to have a world get turned upside down? How did the first believers, the, the early believers in the book of Acts, turn the world upside down? Why? By the demonstration of the Spirit. The demonstration of the Spirit. And it was not confined to a church house. They went out into the streets. I know there's a, a virus out there. I know, and this is where, this is where, this is why I read, I guess I'm, I'm assuming this is why I read to he's above every principality, every sickness, every disease. Maybe the Lord was setting me up for this one. He wanted you to make sure that you knew that before I made this statement, that he is above all those things. And he has placed all those things underneath his feet. But if you cannot come into agreement with that, then those things will be over your head. But he says, in my body, they're under my feet. Where are they in yours? Where are they in yours? Where is all this stuff? Because how can we go into a hurting and dying world when we're scared of what's out there? And you use wisdom, you use all that stuff, but leprosy didn't stop Jesus. Sickness and disease didn't stop Jesus. Who was Caesar at the time didn't stop Jesus. That would be the president in our time. Didn't stop Jesus. Government and authority didn't stop Jesus. People who differed from his words of truth didn't stop him. Matter of fact, he never even corrected them. What did he do? He simply asked them a question and flipped it on them and got them to see the sin that was in front of their own face. Yet the church wants to bash everybody and say, no, do this or this or that. I got, I'm friends with different ethnicities, been that way my whole life. 
different racial skin tones, different everything, different backgrounds, different beliefs, different denominations. But if I bash them because it's different from me, then what kind of example? That'll actually push them away from God. That'll actually deter them away from God. That'll actually like, what do I want to serve your Christ if his response is going to be like that? And he just simply asked them a question and got them to see they're wrong without even pointing it out. And we want to point, 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 point. And we're lacking in what he's called us to be. He said, but this year I'm going to fill my church. This year I'm going to fill my church. Please stand up with me. Was this okay? This was literally going off, going off the spirit of the Lord. I want every head bowed and every eye closed. If you have never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, and you say, I don't know him as Lord, I don't know him as my personal Savior, I don't know who he is, and I want to know him, it is, it, it, all it is is you just surrendering your life and accepting his. That is all it is. I don't want to say it's just a prayer because it's more than a prayer. You are not just praying to give, uh, to, to make it to heaven. You are surrendering your life to him. And you say, well, my life is crappy. My life is crummy. My life is no good. Well, then give it to him. He'll gladly take it. And he will turn your life. It's not going to happen overnight. It's going to happen. It's going to be a process. But he will take his, your life and give you his. If there be anybody in here today, I'm going to ask that you raise your hand. And for those of you who are online and you say that I need to accept Jesus Christ, I want to give my life to him. Is there anybody in here today? If not, we're going to pray a prayer. So maybe those of you who are watching online, you say, that is me. And so with, with every head bowed and every eye closed, we're going to pray the prayer of salvation. It's not going to be a prayer, but it's going to be a surrender. And so right now, if that be you, I just say, repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you just like I am, a broken person, a sinner in need of a Savior. I ask you to wash me with your blood. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe that you went to hell, you rose from the dead, and now you are seated at the right hand of the Father, waiting and preparing a place for me. I accept you into my life. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I surrender all that I am to you. In Jesus' name, I call you Lord. Amen. If that happened to be your first time praying that prayer in here today, we, we encourage you to get with one of the leaders. Maybe you didn't raise your hand. If that happened to be your first time praying that prayer online, we encourage you to email us or to write us or to, to, to message us on Facebook and let us know so that we can reach out to you and, and congratulate you and give you some steps and then and, and, and the process of where you need to go forward from here. But now number two. If there be anyone sick here, I want to give this opportunity for you to come forward so that we can lay hands on you. The Bible says that if anyone be sick, let them come to the elders so that they can lay hands on you. And the Bible says that anyone who believes and lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. So there be anybody at this time and you want to come forward, come forward at this time. And the third thing, you can't talk about spiritual gifts without giving an invitation to activate those spiritual gifts. We have a lot of people in here who do not operate in the supernatural. It kind of freaks you out a little bit. You know, Jesus, I heard a preacher say this, and it's probably going to sting a little bit. But he said, if you've been saved more than three years and you don't operate in supernatural gifts... You're a baby. You're supposed to have operated in supernatural gifts within three years. I said, I don't know if I agree with that. He said, how long did the disciples were with Jesus? He said, three years. That's all they got. And they operated in the supernatural after that. 
thought, wow, that's awesome. And we got people in here saved for 10 years, 15 years, and don't operate in supernatural gifts. But today is the day. You say, I don't speak in tongues fluently, or I haven't been baptized in the Spirit of God. I haven't been baptized in the Holy Spirit. You say, I want that in filling. I want that. You've got a desire. He says, pursue love in 1 Corinthians 14. Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts. Well, who's love? God. God is love. Pursue love. Who is, who is God in man form? Jesus Christ. So who are you pursuing? Jesus Christ and desire spiritual gifts. So with every head bowed, don't look at me. I don't want to see your eyeballs. You say, I want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. I want to be have the Holy Spirit come and encompass me and surround me and have the evidence of speaking in tongues. If that be anybody in here today. And it's not something that we take lightly. This is not something you say, well, I've prayed before and people have laid their hands on me and I haven't gotten it. Yes, you did. You got it. Because let God be true and every man be a liar. He says that when you ask, he gives. You just haven't activated it yet. Because you've been thinking with your mind and not believing with your heart and your spirit. And so there be anybody in here today, raise your hand. You want to come to the front. If not, we will pray. A broad prayer. Anybody at all? Amen. So I want you to be praying in tongues right now as I pray then. Everybody pray in the spirit. Everybody just pray in the spirit and don't be, don't be scared. Don't be uh, frightened. You need to pray in the spirit right now so that we can pray as a body of believers for the church as a whole. Father, right now we lift up your body. We lift up the church as a whole, God. We know right now that your body is hurt. We know that your body is injured, that maybe even some parts of your body are broken. Father, but we lift up your body and we thank you for the Holy Spirit power. The Holy Spirit power that is going to mark your body from this moment on in a way that we have never seen before. Father, that the fire of the Holy Spirit would rise up in your believers that we would exercise every spiritual blessing that you have already given. For those right now that are online that say, I want to be baptized in the Spirit and you weren't here right now, I say receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not confined to radio waves, is not confined to a camera, is not confined to a glass, is not confined through frequencies. He is there right there right now. Begin to clear your mind, begin to clear your emotions and let Him have your His way in you right now. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your fire. I thank you for your person, for your per- Holy Spirit. I thank you that you are a person and you desire communion with us. And that as we go forward for the rest of this year and as a new year approaches, that you will begin to make ready all that that needs to be ready so that you can explode in your body. For we still believe that you are the same God yesterday, today, and forever, and that you still heal, save, and deliver, and that you still operate in the supernatural, for you are a God of supernatural. And so right now, for those that are even standing in this, mo- in this, in this church right now, that feel the, the urge but didn't quite come up out of whatever reasoning that they 
might have talked themselves out of. I pray that you meet them in their home. I pray that you meet them in their car. I pray that you meet them wherever they're at and have a supernatural encounter with them. An encounter that will never allow them to be the same. That will change them from the inside out. that will allow the fullness of who you are to be in them. That everything was made through you and for you would begin to operate in our lives. And that we would be the ever present example of who Christ is through us. And I pray for all the believers once again that have fallen or that have stumbled, that, that are letting their, their opinions and, and their viewpoints and their political viewpoints and, and letting, them, letting that stifle the call that you have placed on their life. I pray for them right now. That they would return to their first love. Father, for those that are in here that have lost first love, I pray that they would return to their first love for every leader that has allowed everything to get inside them, that has that has sidetracked them, I pray that they would return to their first love. For it is at first love that you move the greatest. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you. We thank you. If you're in agreement, shout amen. 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 Well, church, we bless you in the name of the Lord. We're thankful for everybody who's here and attending, and we thank you for all those who are attending online. And until next time, guys, we are dismissed, and Lord bless you and keep you. Amen.